Some other things that you want to talk about or ask the patient in their history uh, are um, whether they have any immunosuppressive conditions, uh, cancer, HIV. Uh, that's a big one. That's really going to change your diagnosis or differential diagnosis. If they have HIV, you're going to think about a whole different set of pathogens, uh, and that's also probably beyond the scope of what we can talk about today. Um, other medical problems that you might want to think about, if they have diabetes, uh, there's not really any pathogens that we think of, but they may be somewhat immunosuppressed because of that. Uh, particular medications that you want to know about, prednisone, can make someone relatively immunosuppressed, and then certain medications that can cause diarrhea. Um, if there's any new ones in particular, um, let's say they have HIV and they started on Norvir, for instance, that's a common medicine that causes diarrhea, and um, even though the diarrhea may be acute, it doesn't have to be infectious if it's a new medication. And that's just one example of a medication that can cause diarrhea, and there's many others. Uh, so ask about any new medications. The physical exam uh, isn't always helpful in delineating the cause of the diarrhea, uh, but it's important to look for any signs of dehydration because this is going to tell you how severe their diarrhea may be and help to determine whether you need to admit the patient to the hospital. So things that you'll look for as signs of dehydration are an increased heart rate or tachycardia, a low blood pressure, um, tenting of the skin, um, dry mucous membranes, um, and just an overall not looking good. Um, on the abdominal exam, you can look for point tenderness. This is generally not going to be the case. If they have a lot of um, bowel wall edema or a colitis associated with their diarrhea, they may have generalized tenderness in the lower quadrants of the abdomen. And then bowel sounds may be hyperactive, depending on... Uh, on how long they've had the diarrhea and, um, and what the cause is. So now you're going to take everything that you've gathered from the patient and try to put together your differential diagnosis. Um, there's uh, many different causes of acute infectious diarrhea that we think about. Uh, the bacteria uh, that can cause uh, acute infectious diarrhea are listed here. Um, Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter, and Yersinia are the main ones. And some of these can cause bloody diarrhea, and others just cause um, regular non-bloody diarrhea. And your epi clues are going to help you here. Salmonella uh, can be associated with turtles and puppies and food outbreaks. Um, but most of the time, they aren't going to have any of these um, associations. Uh, Shigella. Uh, can also be um, associated with some pets and some foods, uh, but most of the time they're not going to give that history. It can also be seen in MSM. Uh, Campylobacter, the classic association you'll see on the board is with puppies again, um, and it can also be seen in MSM and in travel. Uh, Yersinia is not very common in the United States, uh, but it can be associated with food. Uh, e. coli is travel related. Uh, in some cases, it's the toxin of the E. coli that causes the diarrhea, and in which case, growing it on the stool culture isn't going to be related to their diarrhea. Um, most of our cultures, as I'll talk about later, uh, also test for the toxin of E. coli, and that the toxin is actually what causes the diarrhea. And then finally, um, C. diff. And this is associated with antibiotic exposure, which is another important thing to ask the patient um, on their history, is any antibiotic expo exposure for the past six months, um, because that can linger and um, C. diff can be uh, a problem for up to six months after antibiotics. Uh, viruses are not able to be cultured. Um, but they are common causes of diarrhea, in particular norovirus. Uh, most norovirus cases uh, are associated with outbreaks, but there are sporadic cases as well. This is the one that you often see associated with cruise ships, uh, and there are also other big outbreaks that aren't on cruise ships that occur. 
Uh, rotavirus is mostly seen in kids, um, but there are some cases in adults as well. Uh, and if we don't find any bacterial cause, um, we usually attribute it to a virus, but we don't have any specific tests for these. And then, as I alluded to earlier, uh, there are toxin-mediated causes of um, acute diarrhea. Uh, the shiga toxin are probably the most common. These are usually related to E. coli. Uh, a few others that can be toxin-mediated are B. cereus, which is found in food, and Staph aureus, which is also a toxin-mediated food poisoning. Uh, these usually occur within six to eight hours of food ingestion uh, and are presumptuous because we can't diagnose these two. And finally, there's parasitic causes of uh, infectious diarrhea. Usually these present less acutely than the bacterial or toxin-mediated causes. Uh, it can go anywhere from three to four weeks uh, into the presentation before they'll, the patient will present to you. And they're... Um, Less acute and fulminant can be associated with more flatulence uh, than bacterial causes. Um, giardia uh, can be seen in campers and people who have exposure to creek water or stream water. Um, cryptosporidium is common in HIV patients. Uh, Non-HIV non patients can also get it, um, and it's also associated with outbreaks. And then entamoeba is usually seen in travelers, and it's more of a dysentery or a bloody diarrhea.